Hello everyone and welcome to another video. In today's video, we are playing against Karthus Jungle once again, and he's running Exhaust, which is a bit unusual. I'm not sure why they picked Karthus against Volibear, but maybe there's a twist to this pick. Enjoy. Now, since we're experiencing a bit of a setback due to the recent nerf to our E, our Wave Clear and Early Camp Clear have really slowed down. This means we don't reach Scuttle Crab on spawn, so the only solution I've found to deal with this is to skip hitting level 4 and go for a gank at level 3. It might seem awkward or counterproductive since Krugs have the most gold of any camp, but we do what we can to compensate for the lack of camp clear until we find a better solution. Now, of course, I previously suggested that we should skip the Krugs to compensate for the tempo, but it's not like we're doing something magical or mysterious. We're essentially gambling. In other words, we're sacrificing some XP to gain a gold lead, which can come back to bite us later on. Here's the formula. If you clear your camps twice and double Scuttle Crab, you'll need only one grub to reach level 6. If not, you won't hit level 6 until you clear all the grubs, and even then, you might fall short. In this game, Karthus, due to some unfortunate events, soaked a lot of XP from the top side and spent the whole game clearing his camps. So, as a jungler, the difference in early game decision making comes down to this. Can you hit level 6 faster than the enemy? If yes, then you should win the 1 versus 1. If not, then you might need to beg your team for help at the camps. So, every time we catch Karthus, we can secure objectives, and every time he's down, the enemy team will likely get tilted, blaming him for not taking Flash and picking an immobile mage in the jungle. In other words, it's a greedy pick. Aside from that, a greedy pick only offers value by dishing out a lot of damage toward the end of the mid-game and into the late game. Also, there's another issue with picking Karthus in the jungle here. If they had an AD mid laner, I would understand the choice, but they have Twisted Fate, which likely indicates he'll go for an on-hit AD build. However, the twist is that he's actually building as a standard AP Twisted Fate, so there's clearly some miscommunication on their team. Situations like this reveal key points in the game that we can exploit, with we have some room to delay defensive items until the mid-game. In this situation, I was really hoping the top laner, mid laner, or support would simply check on Karthus's grubs. This small action alone could pressure him, especially since he doesn't have flash. A jungler can have a maximum of two smites with a 15 second cooldown in between. If you can bait out the first smite on the first grubs, the second one can actually be contested just with spells. No need for smite if you time your abilities right. It's clear Riot values the grubs as major objectives as each kill on them resets their HP. This means Karthus would struggle if someone else were contesting them, and that someone doesn't always have to be me. But, of course, this is solo queue, and teammates don't always follow your calls. I'm content with the current setup, though. Sometimes asking for more just risks problems from your allies. The enemy team has completely changed their tactics. They're now just waiting for their ultimates to make plays. In a situation like this, you should play aggressively, even if it means risking death, which is totally fine here. The plan is straightforward. Start a fight. Aim to take down a target, ideally initiating in the jungle. If that's not possible, then go for a dive. We have a lot of single target damage, which means we can force engagements to our advantage making fights more favorable. Sometimes all you need are some pings or coordination to take down a key target. In this specific game, I didn't need as much coordination, as the team has been aggressive from the start, probably because of the Karthus pick. So far, every fight around the jungle was totally in our favor. To be honest, if I don't get stunned, I don't see myself dying. Never mind. Karthus is viable mid-game to late game, but we get the Baron because they can't check the jungle, which is GG. So far, every fight we've initiated in the jungle has worked out in our favor. The workflow here is straightforward. I catch someone, Talon chases them down, and if he can't finish them, Pike will take them out. Meanwhile, the rest of the team seems to be in their own world. Warwick has been trying to one versus one Scion since the start, and Corky is perma-pushing, just farming and taking towers without rotating or grouping up. This means the plays are essentially down to me, the mid laner, and the support. The three of us are well coordinated and packing enough punch that if we catch any one target, they're instantly deleted. With this, we've forced the enemy team to turtle in their base. They can't even check their own jungle, which opens us up for a free Baron. As Volibear, I don't even need defensive stats to secure objectives like Baron. With just one other heavy damage dealer, ideally the ADC with high DPS, or the mid laner if not, we can easily take Baron with just two people. Right now, the only thing pushing us forward is the instinct to chase a kill. As the jungler, you need to be tuned into your team as though you're playing their role yourself, almost like you're trying to direct your hands and feet in a specific direction while each have their own mind. Here's a rule of thumb. If you catch yourself typing, you're doing something wrong. Typing as a jungler usually means you're either getting tilted or already are. So always communicate with your team using your actions, not words. Since fighting is our best strat, 
might as well seek a fight rather than simply stand idle. Of course, Karthus' damage late game is crazy, but what was the price? And a lot of kill trades? I still don't see the utility of this pick. After some thought, I realized that one reason for our coordination issues might be that we're backing at different times to buy items, which leaves us out of sync. Waiting a bit to regroup can make a huge difference. Once you've got all your allies around, your one goal should be clear. Catch someone. Volibear's strength lies in his ability to pick a target, click on them, and stun them for a second. That's where the team's damage needs to focus. Of course, this is easier said than done, especially with champions like Milio and Twisted Fate. If they're working together, they make it nearly impossible to lock down a target. But since this is solo queue, all we need is a catalyst, something as simple as denying vision. It's always funny how, no matter the game, the support players often end up face-checking every bush, like they're destined to get slapped around for vision since the start of League. It's been like this for over 14 years, and it's honestly pretty hilarious. Even though we're winning, the enemy team still has the upper hand when it comes to engage. Once they have all their ultimates, they become a better team. So far, our victories come from creating situations that force them to waste their spells and ultimates. I remember in another game against Karthus, that guy got a triple kill on bot side, rushed his magic items, and whenever we fought him, he either took two people with him or pressed R, and someone was dead. We were always at a disadvantage. But in this game, it's the opposite. We have champions like Talon, Pike, and Warwick who can easily kill Karthus and then escape while he can't do anything against that. He is just wasting resources. The same goes for Sion. He's trying to fight Warwick, who's building to counter him completely. I don't even know how to counter Warwick when he's going full damage on Volibear. So that's another issue for another game. Even with our rough score, we've managed to play the game better than expected. I was hoping this pick would show some unique strategy against Volibear, but sadly, it feels like they're just copying a streamer and don't know how to adapt from behind. Another note about Hextech Flash. In this specific game, I didn't find many good opportunities to use it since most of the fights happened right in front of us. Even when we encountered Karthus in the jungle, there was no sneaky play involved. He was always right in our line of sight and the fights went as expected. As for Vision, the Umbral Glaive item that Pike used was incredibly helpful. Since Pike's movements are always clearing wards, we had the upper hand in jungle vision thanks to that. This made using Hextech Flash to trick someone, flank, or find a better angle unnecessary in this game. I'm still experimenting to find the best use for Hextech Flash. One idea is to use it while counter jungling, skipping directly to my camps. That would save us around 4 seconds which could help offset the clear speed lost from the nerfs. Well, this is the last play of this game. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe, leave a comment if you're new to the channel, and drop a like. As always. I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone, and peace.